Good morning and welcome to the Lake District. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm coming to the end of a one week trip up here with my other half Andy. This morning we've got up really early because we are going to go on an 8.9 kilometer hike around the Langdales. And even though it doesn't sound like it's very long, everything that I've read online is saying that it's a very technical and very challenging hike. So even though the All Trails app was saying that you should take about four hours to complete it, all of the reviews were saying you need so much more time than that. Just as we are driving south towards Ambleside, we have come across this, which is absolutely spectacular. There's all of this fog lying low in the valley, so we couldn't resist just pulling over to get a few photographs. We've been really fortunate as we've pulled up to the foot of the Langdales. There is a lay-by for seven vehicles and we were the seventh vehicle to pull up. So we've nabbed that last spot. If we hadn't been able to get parked up here, there is a car park a little bit further down the road, but naturally you have to pay for that. The Langdales are what you can see behind me. So we'll go and make a start on it. There's like a fence around loads and loads of bird feeders with these like bird hide cutouts. And I think because we've come so early in the morning and there's hardly anyone around, there are so many birds inside of there. I'm not too sure how it would fare though as the day goes on when you get a lot of people making a lot of noise. I'm sure the old trails app said that dogs were not allowed on this, but this is very much a dog trap door. This hike means business right from the get go. It's very steep and it's mostly very rocky like this. Like this is the path behind me. And even though it started off as being a very, very cold morning this morning, I'm sure I could see my breath when I was speaking. It's hot and I think that it's much hotter than what it's been any other day this week. And so my body's really feeling it. But I always say I'd far rather that this level of steepness right at the very start because your body's at least got that energy and it's not been tuckered out by like lots of long distance walking along flat and then suddenly it's like aha now you have to go up but i just think regular rest stops and probably water as well as wise <laughs> We're getting views out onto a farm that from up here just looks to be a complete and utter mess. And I think it's probably safe to say that there are now two types of farms in the Lake District. You've got those types that are the more traditional ones that are still making all of their money off of the rearing of animals. And then the other type of farm that there now seems to be is catered towards holiday makers. And so it looks really prim and proper and everyone thinks, oh, how idyllic to live on a farm. But I don't think that those actually reflect the reality. I think that one down is the reality. Whilst there are plenty of scrambly parts of the trail, you do come across these sorts of flat sections too. And I love how as you get higher and higher up, you start to see things that you couldn't see at ground level. So we've got a tarn off to my left hand side and you can just see the very northern edge of Lake Windermere peeking around the hills. And I think what's really nice is that I have never been to this part of the Lake District before. So everything just feels very new and exciting. Oh, the crags and stickles are really now starting to come into view, making us realise that we've still got a fair bit more elevation to go. 
On that side, the really big one is Harrison Stickle, and that's going to be the one that we come down on. On this side is Loft Crag, that's the one that we're going to be going up on. There are a few more up there that we're going to hopefully do a circular around, visiting a few of them, and like sticking right out at the back that looks more like a cliff face is then a pavey arc, and that's one that we're going to as well. This part of the trail doesn't have any name given to it, but it's a sort of plateau that's just a little bit more sheltered, so you haven't got any of the views now, but obviously the views that we do have are pretty spectacular. And you wouldn't have known that this was up here, and what I like about this trail is there's really sharp upward sections, and then when you get to the top of them, you're almost always rewarded with something like this, where it's an almost plateau. Yes, it's still going up, but it's so gentle. It's really nice on the knees and on the legs, and then you get that, and then it's upwards again. This one is Loft Crag. And it's 682 meters. First of a few to do, and it's absolutely freezing, so I think our fleeces are coming on immediately. Now that beast of a fell in the background is only apparently 27 meters higher than this that we've managed to get up to. From the line of eyesight, it looks like it is considerably higher. We're gonna to have to drop down just a little bit in elevation before going back up, but I say we need to keep on going because the, the coldness is definitely setting in and we need to keep that blood pumping. This trail really is a mixed bag of surfaces. There's parts that are super stony and loose and then there's other parts where you haven't to scramble up rock faces. And then there's parts like we're about to get to where obviously someone's come along and maintained a proper staircase. quite pleased we actually stopped for 11 Z's because whilst we were up at the top we saw a group of four trail runners go that way so I think we just assumed that we would probably be going that way as well but of course whilst we were sat down having 11 Z's we got out our OS map and we've actually realised we don't want to be going that way we in fact want to be going this way and I'm quite quickly starting to realise why people have described the top as being very boggy I'm just hoping that because today is the 2nd of September that the summer has allowed for it to dry out and that I'm not going to end up with soggy shoes. We survived the valley part of the bog but it's still incredibly boggy coming up on the other side. There's like a little bit of water that's oozed in through the very edges of my hiking shoes. So I would say that if you're watching this video, because you two are planning on coming hiking this, any other time of the year except for late summer, I would highly recommend a pair of waterproof hiking shoes or boots. Seven 
Hanots is a little bit of a funny one. It doesn't really feel that much more elevated to the land around it, but it is marked very clearly on the OS map and there's a cairn up at the top to be able to say this is the point. However, it is just a little bit unusual, I guess, because you're not like looking out onto a sheer drop and seeing spectacular views. You really start to appreciate a bit more what's around you. There's quite a few sheep up here grazing on the wild grasses. There's some really quite cool rock formations and a few tarns. And now for the first time today, we're really starting to get some quite spectacular views over Lake Windermere. We are incredibly hungry, so we're just bucking it right now to pay the arc in the hope that the winds won't have picked up too much up on the peak and we should hopefully be able to have some lunch with quite a spectacular view. Peak number four, pay the arc. 700 meters. Unfortunately, it's not classed as an actual peak and it's an area that's the arc, so there's no can, there's no trig point, but we figured this would do. Unfortunately though, the wind has definitely picked up, so we are actually just gonna drop down ever so slightly to find a bit of shelter to have lunch. <laughs> Cheers. I'd said earlier that one of the exciting things about this hike is it's a part of the Lake District that I'm just not very familiar with. But I guess one of the things about getting height is that once you get up high enough, you are gonna start looking down onto areas that you are a lot more familiar with. And the first penny drop was actually Helm Crag. It was the fact that there was this very wide grassy path and ferns on either side of it. And I just distinctly remember that from hiking up it last year. And then of course we were like, well, that was right next to Grasmere. So wait, is that what that village is? And then we could look a little bit further over and we're like, oh, and then that's Bridal Water, which is where we were walking on the Sunday. And then further around, we've then got Luffrig and Luffrig Tarn, which again is where we were also walking on Sunday. So I guess when we were like round the back, everything was very much like, I have no idea what any of this is. I've not been to any of these places. But as soon as we've come over onto the Paviark and Harrison Stickle side of things, it's starting to get familiar. that the rock here is like super unusual. It almost looks like they've taken pebbles and it's all been like <laughs> set within concrete. It's really, really sharp, which makes it great for coming down with the hiking shoes, plenty of grip. But obviously if we were to slip, it's gonna be super painful if you land on this. Trail from Pave Yark to Harrison Stickle is giving us spectacular views down onto Stickle Tarn. Down there, there's someone on a stand up paddleboard, which on its own doesn't seem overly unusual. It seems to be a very popular pastime here in the Lake District. But what really gets me is knowing just how high up they've had to hike with a really, really heavy stand up paddleboard and the paddles to get from where you can park the car up to this tarn. That is dedication to the cause. I guess they must be really into their stand-up paddleboarding then. Harrison Stickle. 732 meters. <laughs> Look at this struggle. <laughs> yes.
I have been so confused for the last hour or so because way up there there's a stream with some waterfalls and I was like at oh, what point this morning did we cross over it and Andy kept on saying to me no we didn't cross over it the entire hike was on the other side and it's only now that we've actually got to this point and you can see over on that side that there's like another mound and I, I guess the hiking trail's more sort of over that mound so I think I was just looking out and thinking oh it just dips down a little bit to the tarn because that's what normally happens and I was thinking this is all a tarn and had absolutely no idea that that huge gorge of a valley was down there but n n now that we're actually at this point I mean my head has been hurting trying to get my head around it now that we're at this point I feel like that sort of calm satisfaction of ah it all makes sense now I'm happier now <laughs> Sheep is too. You sure it makes sense? <laughs> yes, of course it makes sense. Why would it not make sense? Does it not make sense? Am I just making this up? No. We've broken Caroline. I'll leave a link in the description below of the exact all trails route that we've taken but one thing that I would say is that when we've tried to cut across the fell side to get to the tarn the path that it was recommending that we take was pretty much non-existent now there was another path that we could have gone much further down in elevation joined onto it and then obviously had to come back up in elevation quite a bit and so we actually just decided to off-piste it we were following it along using gps exactly where it was saying that the trail should be but there was very much no trail so it is maybe just one thing to be aware of we could see people in front of us who were all sort of stopped i think trying to work out where that path was and when we looked back up the hillside they were also trying to figure out where this trail was so I think it might be a bit of a common problem. The trail skirt is along the front end of Stickle Tarn. When we first arrived there was no one inside of it but a couple on one side have gone in gentleman on the other side's gone in and all three of them as soon as they went in there was that <gasps> gasp of, of, of like this water is so cold so I have no desire at all to go into this as lovely as it looks and as gorgeous as the setting is. On the other side it looks like a cliff face that you would think you'd only be able to get up by rock climbing using ropes but there is in fact something called Jack's Rake and it's a scrambling route it is marked on the OS map but it's very very dangerous we didn't even discuss or entertain the idea of going up to the top via this route just because it is very much a sheer cliff drop on one side and then obviously a sheer cliff drop just upwards on the other side. We saw one group, just as we were finishing up our lunch, arrive up at the top of Pavey Arc from having done Jack's Rake. But the difference was is that they had helmets and harnesses and ropes and what have you. From down here, we've seen a couple of people going up that I'm not entirely sure if they do have all of those ropes. And obviously that's what makes this kind of scrambling incredibly dangerous. We passed a couple of gentlemen hiking away from the tarn about five, 10 minutes ago. And one of the gentlemen was saying to us, oh, please tell me you're not going up there. And we said, no, no, don't worry. We've, we've already been up, but we went up another way. And he said that someone's fiance had died on this just earlier this year so it really just goes to show just how dangerous scrambling can in some situations be. We accidentally crossed over this stream when we weren't meant to have done and the path on the other side looks really well paved like someone's come along and properly maintained it and it's like a stairwell and this side is just a little bit of a disaster so we're just going to try and scramble a little bit down according to the os map there is actually a part linking here and hopefully we'll get onto the better paved side no sooner have we crossed over the river the actual path is forcing us to cross back again the only difference was is that here there was a staircase down whereas that side it was just like a cliff base
we have about 200 meters left. And I can't keep on going, not without a rest and just a little bit of sustenance. So we packed a lot of food for this trip. I say this trip for this, yeah, for this trip, this outing. And I still got loads of trail mix left. So that is what I'm going for. Now, you just like pretzels. An apple. You haven't, oh, you're making me feel guilty. Maybe I should have an apple. Oh, trail mix if you want to. I'd rather trail mix, yeah. we're back down to where it all began. I can attest to the fact that online when people say it's gonna take a lot longer than what everything online is saying, it's gonna take a lot longer. And the fact that it's very undulating and up and down really takes it out of you. Yep, it really does. The bogginess at the top, yeah, it's really boggy. And I have to say that on the way back down, I just, I think was letting gravity pull me the rest of the way and I am absolutely exhausted. It's certainly not the most difficult or trickiest of hikes that we've done or the longest of hikes that we've done this week. I would say that the day when we went up to Buttermere and we went from the Buttermere haystacks to Red Pike was the most epic, but I think that's what's finished us off. As always, if you guys could give this a like, I'd be ever so grateful. And we will see you guys in the next adventures. Bye-bye.